Well, welcome to Miracle Living Today. I'm Gordon Robertson. Hey, everyone, and I'm Ashley Key. Well, Melissa's heart was failing fast, and she needed a cardiac transplant. So when a replacement became available, Melissa was rushed to the hospital. But right before the surgeon made his first cut, he saw something so shocking, and he canceled the operation. March 2009, Melissa Justice and her husband Ray were coming back from a cruise when Melissa began experiencing pains in her chest. I was 31, and I just feel like you don't have a lot of aches and pains, so I didn't really think too much of it. Back home, the pains persisted, and Melissa decided to see a doctor. An ultrasound brought shocking results. I'll never forget, he said, normal hearts beat like this, and yours is barely doing this. That initial shock of something's wrong, of something's different, that knowledge that life is never gonna be the same or potentially never gonna be the same again is jarring. The diagnosis, chronic systolic heart failure, a condition where one chamber in the heart can't pump blood effectively. Melissa's heart was functioning at only 15% capacity. They put her on medication, but her best hope of survival was a heart transplant. It was like being told, you know, you planned this whole future with your husband and this beautiful family that you, you had in your mind and this beautiful career that you were working on so hard. It was like having everything ripped out from underneath you. After three months of medication, Melissa's heart function had gotten worse, dropping to 7%. Needing more specialized care, she was sent to Ohio State University Hospital. That's bad heart failure, and that means that you typically aren't able to do things that you used to do your normal daily activities. It's a life-altering diagnosis. Even though these days we keep a lot of these heart failure patients alive, it's not the same life. We would wake up every morning and we would give ourselves an entire hour where we'd just let ourselves grieve that life that we were losing. After that hour was over, we would come together and we would pray and we would say, you know, we're going to make the best of this day that we can. Melissa had a heart pump implanted in August of that year. Along the way, Melissa started a blog to chronicle her journey and ask for prayer just tried to trust that God would be with us. I, I did not feel better. I remember actually thinking, I cannot believe the human body can take this much pain. Kept thinking, maybe tomorrow I'll feel better, but months after the surgery, I still was feeling very rough. What's the future gonna hold? What's it gonna look like? Will my wife still even be here in six months? Will I need to plan a funeral? After four months of little improvement, it seemed a transplant was still the best option. After passing the candidacy test with perfect numbers, Melissa was put at the top of the transplant list, but only for 30 days. On January 10th, 2010, the last day of her eligibility, a suitable heart became available. Melissa was wheeled in for surgery that night. The best case scenario was I was going to get this transplant and it was going to be fantastic. And, um, and I was trying to prepare for the worst at the same time. And I, I wanted to truly honor God. Whether I passed or whether I lived, I wanted to honor God in whatever I did. Praying for strength for her, for as good of a recovery as we could expect. You know, if things did not go as planned, you know, the grace to get through that, the strength to get through those outcomes. Dr. Perez comes out in two to three hours was the time frame, and we just all freeze, right, in the waiting room. Either something's really, really good or something's really, really bad. So I woke up and I thought, well, I feel better than I thought I feel the first time, but I had only had, like, open heart was my first surgery. So I expected to feel a lot worse than I felt. So when Ray came in, he said, honey, you didn't get the transplant. And I was like, oh man, the heart was bad. And Ray said, no, honey, your heart is better. God healed your heart, you didn't need the transplant. Moments after Melissa was put under, her anesthesiologist, Dr. Perez, decided to do one final test. What he saw, he couldn't explain. I put the probe in, and what I see is a heart that is almost, but not quite completely normal in its squeeze. 
I kept looking at this heart that was banging away virtually normally, and she's not on any supportive drugs at all. The surgeon looked at that heart, saw what I saw, and said, I can't give her a heart that works better than this. The morning of my knot transplant, I remember my surgeon coming in, and he said, Melissa, we have no idea what made you sick, and we have no idea what's made you better. And we said, we do, we knew. Months later, the pump was removed. Today, after more than a decade, Melissa's heart is still going strong. And while it's not quite 100%, she's still able to be the active mother of two adopted boys and loving wife that God has called her to be. It's still tough some days, but it's life. I still wake up in the morning and I say, thank you, God, for healing my heart. Seeing Melissa today, over 10 years later, still with her own heart, living a normal life, it's just a privilege to have been a part of it. We know miracles happen, right? We read about them in the Bible, but to see one, to see something so tangible happen was amazing. I have a beautiful life, a very full life, and I have life, which is the, the best part. And you can have that same life too, because that's what Jesus came to bring us. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And when you tap into him yeah. and what he has for you, then you get that abundant life. Mm -hmm. So Melissa did that. Everyone around her praying for her did yeah. that. And then you see the result. Yeah, and I'm just reminded watching that story too, you know, Tell God what your desire is, no matter how big it might be. They were praying for her heart to be completely healed. And God did that so much so that she didn't even need a heart transplant anymore. The doctor goes, this is a great heart. You know, you are healed. She came off the medication. She's, you know, healed. It's just amazing. So I just think it's a good reminder for all of us. Make your request known to the Lord, no matter how big, how small, He wants to answer and He will answer. Ashley and I are gonna be praying for you at the end of this program. We want to show you some more miracle stories, but in that admonition, if you will, take that advice and say, I'm gonna write down my prayer request. I'm gonna show it to myself and to the Lord. Lord, this is what I want, mm -hmm. and this is what I want you to do. Could, could you do this for me? Let your request be made known. You have not because you ask not. So we're going to be asking. You write, and then we're going to agree with you in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have another amazing miracle testimony for you guys. Imagine this, a brain bleed the size of a golf ball with increased pressure that threatened to cut off the blood flow to the brain. That's exactly what five-year-old Zoe Morris faced after she woke up screaming in the middle of the night. Here's her story. We woke up in the middle of the night hearing her screaming. We found her in the kitchen. She was just walking aimlessly. Her eyes were wild. I looked in her bed and she had vomited in the bed and I thought maybe she just had a bad stomach virus. Chris and Ashley Morris knew something wasn't right with their five-year-old daughter, Zoe. She passed out in my arms. And at that point, you know, I knew something was definitely wrong. They took Zoe to a 24-hour emergency clinic nearby. Dr. Kenneth Jones knew at once what to look for. They're vomiting, passing out, and then actually seeing Zoe unconscious. I said, something is going on brain-wise. He ordered a CAT scan that confirmed his suspicions. Zoe had a brain hemorrhage the size of a golf ball. With the brain bleed, the pressure pushes brain tissue down the spinal cord. We call it herniation of the brain, and that is something that uh, cannot be fixed. I'm freaking out. It's the worst thing you could ever have happen to your kid. That is when I started coming into extreme warfare prayer, and I was just telling the Lord, I need you, and you need to come down and touch this baby. Zoe was transferred to Texas Children's Hospital in Houston where she was put into a medically induced coma. Ashley's parents and Zoe's older brother, Zach, arrived moments later. They prayed over Zoe before she was taken into ICU for testing. I'd definitely like to take her place at that point. 
doctors discovered a tangled mass of abnormal blood vessels known as an arteriovenous malformation, or AVM, and it had burst. When you have increased pressure in the brain, cutting off blood flow to itself, it dies. The bleeding stopped the next evening, but the pressure was still at critical levels. Hoping to avoid surgery, doctors decided to wait a few days to see if the pressure would go down on its own and then treat the AVM with radiation. All her family could do was wait and pray. We weren't 100% sure that we would leave the hospital with Zoe. And if we were able to leave with her, whether she would be the same Zoe. By now, Ashley's brother had created a Facebook page to get the word out about Zoe's condition. Thousands posted prayers of support and encouragement for Zoe and the family. Because we were so tired and so uncertain, there were times that we didn't know what to pray. And uh, just knowing that there were so many other people standing in the gap, and there was a sense of peace that came with that. Zoe had been in observation for two days when her brain pressure spiked, and doctors had to prep her for emergency surgery. Doctors said Zoe had a strong chance of surviving, but due to the location of the AVM, her ability to talk and reason could be severely affected. A Zoe that loves to sing and dance, that um, cares for everyone. <laughs> okay, guys, now my mom video. She's so kind and loving and just thinking, God, I don't know how I can look at a mother and daughter again if you take my daughter from me. And I said, God, it's in your hands. I know you're going to make the call of what happens with Zoe, and there's nothing I can do about it. And I, I remember I just felt at peace, and the tears just left. Just let him do his thing. As Zoe was taken into surgery, friends and family gathered in the hospital's small chapel for worship and prayer. One of Zoe's favorite songs is Thy Will Be Done by Hilary Scott. And I just prayed that and just told the Lord, this is in your hands. I don't understand it, but we, we give it to you. We trust you. After five hours of surgery, the doctors gave the news that they had safely removed the AVM. We just said, thank you, God. You know, that was awesome to get that news. We needed it. Again, they would have to wait, this time to see if there would be any long-term effects. Several days later, they started bringing Zoe out of the coma. When she began to wake up, I said, can I sit with her? And uh, they, they released me to jump in the bed with her. She could feel my presence. It really seemed like a turning point for what we were gonna experience in the days to come. Then, a few days later, her grandma came in and she yelled, Mimi! Mimi! What? That's somebody said. That was the first time she had spoken. We didn't think she was ever gonna talk again. So that, that was awesome to see. That was God again. With physical therapy, Zoe began regaining her strength. After six weeks in the hospital, she went home. Very pleased with her walking. When it, this happens in a kid in particular, usually they don't make it. But with her, with a golf-sized ball bleed, I tell you, it's, it's, it's just a miracle that she's here. Today, Zoe is still that happy, energetic, loving little girl. She and her family are grateful for the prayers that brought them through. They say when two or more come together in prayer that he hears us, and it's absolutely true. There's just no doubt about that she is a miracle. She's just 100% back to where she was and even better than ever. Thank you for praying for me. <laughs> Zoe is adorable, and I just thank God that she is alive and well. And there's something that stuck out to me. It's actually something that Zoe's father said, and it was a, a prayer of surrender. And he said, God, I trust you. It's in your hands. And then he said he felt this peace, and it was because he, he was trusting the Lord. He was saying, God, I'm going to let you do your thing.
And the Lord's thing is healing. It is healing. It is miracles. It is salvation. It is redemption. So I just hope that encourages you wherever you're at right now. Let God do his thing and have faith in what he does because it's always something good. It's always something good. You know, another good. way to translate the Greek word for faith is trust. Mm -hmm. you know, another way to, to translate it is rely, mm -hmm. where you're not relying on yourself and your own effort or anything like that. You're, you're not trusting yourself. You're saying, God, I trust you mm -hmm. to do what you said to do. Yeah. Now here you have a little girl named Zoe. There's another, that's a Greek yeah, word too. That means right. life. Mm -hmm. And that same, there's a theme today. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. He gave that life to Zoe. And when you hear about herniated brain tissue mm. and a doctor looking at you and saying, we don't have an answer for that. We don't yeah. have anything for that. And then you have a father saying, I rely on you. I trust mm. you. I'm, I can't do this. The yep. doctors can't do this, but you can do it. Yep. And in that, you get the miracle. You can follow those same steps. If you have something a doctor says is incurable, if you come to the end of yourself and you say, I don't have anything, I, I can't do anything in this situation, that's precisely the time to say, God, you came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. I rely on you. Hmm. Amen. That's good. All right, guys. Well, we have a magazine called Miracle Living Today, and in it has stories of people who have seen God answer their prayers in miraculous ways. So to get your free copy, all you have to do is call us 1-800-700-7000, or you can always text MIRACLE to 80888 or you can visit MiracleLivingToday.com because we want to continue to encourage you in your faith because what God has done for others, he will do for you. Gordon. Well, Stella had a traumatic brain injury. That's what made this musician completely dependent on others for help. See how an audible message from God leads to his recovery and helps him return to the stage. That's right after this. Get Miracle Living Today, the devotional magazine from CBN. This beautifully illustrated publication will build your faith with compelling articles shared by CBN hosts and special guest writers. Be inspired by powerful testimonies of people who have seen God answer their prayers in incredible ways. Call 1-800-700-7000. Visit MiracleLivingToday.com or text MIRACLE to 80888 to get your copy. I'm not breathing enough to make a feather move. It really frustrated me because my quality of life had drastically changed. I could just say, just Lord, I need your help. If someone like, else you have breathing issues, take a complete breath and exhale as Jesus Christ heals you completely. I can feel that air going clear down to my stomach and back. He will always be there walking this out for your benefit. Without warning, Benny fainted. The fall left him with two skull fractures and bleeding in his brain. His wife worried that he'd never be able to walk again. Then one day, Benny heard the audible voice of God, and instantly he knew that he was going to be okay. It sounded almost like a gunshot. He landed on, it was our wood floor, and it was loud. And the first thing I expected to see was blood. Donna DeShera and her husband Benny were up early one morning in 2015. As they prepared for the day, Benny unexpectedly fainted and fell backwards hitting his head on their hardwood floor. Donna quickly realized it was serious. It wasn't long after that that he started telling me that his ears were ringing and he, he saw things in front of his face, and he, he, he was having a severe, you know, head throb. Donna rushed Benny to the ER where doctors determined he had two skull fractures and bleeding in the brain. They were worried about him having seizures. They were worried about brain swelling. They already knew he was bleeding. Donna called friends from church and family asking for prayers for healing. Benny is the lead singer of the Christian rock band Empowered, and as word of his injury spread, there were hundreds of people praying for his recovery. The prayers were important to me because I didn't know what was going on or what was gonna happen. I mean, that's where I turn. I'm gonna turn to God first and 
you know, and start praying. Three days passed and Benny was still in the hospital. Donna continued to pray. The waiting is the hard part, is a really hard, hard thing to be in a situation where you don't know what's gonna happen next. And the only thing I guess I know to do in that situation is just pray and ask God for, for guidance and ask him to be in control. Benny was discharged from the hospital and sent home to rest. Donna had to care for him round the clock as his recovery was still uncertain. I worried about the after effects. Was he gonna be able to walk and function normally again and think normally again? He was awake and he didn't always make total sense, you know, when he spoke. Benny slept 20 hours a day for an entire month. Donna continued to look to God for peace. Okay, God, I'm giving this to you. You say, lay it at your feet and you're not gonna leave us and you're gonna take care of it, that you're in the battle with us. When I truly trusted God, then what I consider that peace is just to be able to do what I need to do and just, you know, the strength to do it. Towards the end of that time, Benny heard a voice that awakened him like never before. One afternoon, I became a little bit cognizant. Donna had left the house because she could leave me at that point. I still had a walker to get around in the house, but I was well enough to be left. And I got an audible voice from God in my living room. And he said, Benny, I have huge and great plans for you coming out of this thing. And this is what I need to come out of that. I need people to know that what I did for you, I stepped in and saved your life. What I did for you, I can do for them if they just press in and call out to me. And man, that was a seriously poignant time. I could tell that it had had a profound effect on him. He got teary-eyed and Benny's not one to cry, you know, real often, but it, it, it like brought him to tears. I mean, he when he was telling me about it and, and talking about God as his father and, you know, and how he came to him and said, you know, have, I have great plans for you. After that, Benny made a remarkable recovery. His experience has strengthened his desire to share God's love. I'll talk to people about Jesus at any, at any point. And it's, it's almost dangerous now because I have this compelling thing where people have to know what he's done and what he can do for them. So the level of, um, the level of sharing has definitely increased and, and it's the level of intensity in that sharing has increased as well. That intensity is felt by audiences during their shows. Benny and Donna are thankful for the prayers and the healing he received during his time of need. It's taught me to be grateful, to be thankful for today, to find the things that we can be grateful for even in the not so good situations. I think that's important for us to remember through all of the craziness, you know, that we can still be thankful for today and to put our thoughts on that instead of on the negative. We can sing our God is an awesome God, but when you go through something in your own personal life and you experience how awesome our God is, you cannot, even the rocks will cry out, right? So. You've got to cry out and just let people know what he's done for you. And, and it, it's, we're doing the Lord's work when we do that. When you have a miracle, you just can't help but tell people about it because it's such an incredible experience. When you go through it, when you hear his voice, when your eyes are open, your ears are open, and you have a heart of understanding, you want to tell everybody, I just accessed heaven. Miracles came down. They came into my body. This is what happened to me. And this is what Jesus tells us. We are his witnesses. We give witness to his glory, to his power, to his ability. We give witness that we can join with his prayer, that wonderful Lord's prayer, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, there's nobody sick. There's nobody who's lost anything. There's no one with a brain bleed. There's no one with a skull fracture. There's no one with anything like that because that's the will of God. Now, we have this enormous privilege of praying to God. We can go boldly to the throne of grace and realize we'll receive grace. We're not going to receive judgment. We will receive grace. We will receive forgiveness and healing. He will welcome us with open arms. He wants to do all of these things for us so we can have confidence in him, confidence that we come to him with our problem. He wants to solve it. So let's do that. You've written down your prayer request. Just hold it in your hand. Hold it up to the Lord and say, Lord, would you do this? Can the kingdom of heaven come into this problem right now? Can you do a miracle for me? Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you. And as people are waving their prayer requests before you, we join with them and we claim when two or more agree touching anything, It shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. So, Lord God, reach and touch with your miracle power. Open their eyes, open their ears that they may see and they may hear, and now give them a heart of understanding that they may believe in the greatness of your power. Do miracles today, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Ashley Gunn's giving you some. Yeah, I believe the Lord is just healing lung issues. I believe lots of people are just, they have their, their hands on their chest and they're asking God to heal them of different conditions. Um, I believe somebody's watching that has severe COPD. There is a lot of wheezing. It's hard for you to breathe on a regular basis. And I believe your name is Linda. And I believe God is touching you right now and healing you completely. You'll be able to take deep breaths once again. You won't have to struggle even standing up or sitting down. God is healing you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Um, There's a woman named Helen, and and you'll know, Helen, you'll know this is you've you've had two um, brain bleeds or strokes. I I don't know which, but there, there are two areas where the blood's not working or has erupted into your brain. God is healing your brain. He's healing your ability. He is taking care of all of that. It's going to be like it never happened to you. So Helen, lift your hands to him. Just begin to rejoice. He's going to give you voice. He's going to give you ability. Everything you're looking for, he is the answer to right now. Amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for what you've done today. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up a phone. We want to stand with you in prayer, and we believe in prevailing prayer. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word. You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the people.